diagnosis and management. Today, uh, Professor Dr. Atul Agrawal from Himalayan Institute of Medical Science, he will moderate the session. And uh, I am requesting to Dr. Atul to kindly proceed. Over to Dr. Atul, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puneet. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puneet. Uh, uh, let me first thank Dr. Puneet Gupta, sir. Who is, uh, uh, who is the president of Uttarakhand Orthopedic Association and Dr. Puneet Agarwal, who is secretary Orthopedic Association Uttarakhand chapter uh, secretary for organizing this webinar for help for all of us. Today we have three esteemed faculties of national and international repute and our topic is Dr. Takaf Tess. We have uh, Dr. Rajkumar Amravati. He is professor at Head Children's Middle College, Bangalore. Yes, sir. Pardon? I'm your voice is not clear. Yes, your voice. Now, now it's clear, sir. Okay. So we have first speaker is Dr. Rajkumar Amravati. Sir is professor and head St. John's Middle College, Bangalore. Is a is a national figure, well known to all of us. I uh, welcome you, sir. Our second speaker is Dr. Pradeep Nimade. He is from KEM Hospitals, Mumbai. A very known figure, well known figure, and uh, very nice to interact with you, sir. A third speaker is, I think he is, oh yes, he is in Dr. Savarnindu Samantha no, no, is from Calcutta, PLS Hospital, Calcutta. So we have such great figures from three great metropolitans. I hope this session should be of a lot of help for all of us. Our panelist is, uh, we have got uh, some uh, great Scopi people from the Uttarakhand State Chapter. We have Dr. Puneet Agarwal, uh, Dr. Tarun Solanki, Dr. Himanshu Kocher, he is there online. Dr. Gaura Gupta, Dr. Ramesh Gaur, Dr. Avnish, and Dr. Aditya Mongya. So without any wasting any time, without being in between any academic quest, I request uh, first Dr. Rajkumar Amrathi, sir, to uh, take over the dice, and he'll be talking about approach to the cuff tears. Sir, please. Can you see my screen, sir? Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, and am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation for the Uttarakhand team. And uh, thank you for uh, having my colleagues, uh, Pradeep and uh, Samantha, also on the same panel. And it's uh, nice after uh, so long. Uh, after COVID only, I'm thinking that uh, probably this is one of the webinars that I would like to always love to come back and, you know, talk and share my experience. And today, as uh, Sir already spoke, uh, we'll be talking something about cuff surgeries, different ways of uh, skinning a cat. Uh, and each of the experts that is there on the panel would highlight. And my charge today is to talk something about how Barsa can help you to uh, augment your uh, cuff repair and the outcomes. This is a new concept that I told uh, Sir that I would be sharing on this platform. Uh, this is a new kid on the block and uh, probably Probably everybody should be aware of it because it is available next to the cup. Um, one minute. My slides are not moving. Um, okay. As we know, we all should start from the anatomy of the shoulder. And here is the supraspinatus, which is uh, this. This is your infraspinatus. And this is your teres minor, which is far on the left. And to your right, you can see a part of the subscapularis, which is here. This is a nice classification given by Curtis and his team. But uh, the later classification that have come out by Sugo and team say that Supraspinate is only a small triangular piece of attachment and the rest of all the thing is by the infraspinatus. Though subscapularis forms a most important anterior muscle and uh, teres minor is on the posterior part of the head of the humerus hugging the infraspinatus. So when the cuff tears, there is a classification that comes into action and based on that, we need to you know, decide what exactly we do to um, manage these kind of tears. Yes, 
we all know that the function of the supraspinatus is to do uh, first 15 degrees of elevation we would be finding weakness in that and we would find weakness if the infraspinatus stone in the adduction and external rotation of the test will be positive so based on that we also would like to know whether the cuff is thrown in complete or in partial so elman helped us in classifying these tears into various grades as you can see on your screen and they basically are classified into a bursal side tear or an articular side tear which is in this fashion this is articular tears which is here and this is a bursal side cuff tears of various grades from 1 to 3 so after that uh gatsman and elman again combined together and gave us the shapes of the tears that we can be encountering when we scope or when we see on the scan and uh, based on which we can plan our strategy how to you know uh, take care of these uh, cuff tears and repair it on table crescent sides uh, cuff tear or whether it is a reverse l shaped or l shaped tears a trapezoidal tear which is massive in nature also a uh, massive cup tear which is in this fashion if you can see my head which you already saw on the screen it is a massive cup tear and probably pradeep nemade's head will be like a partial cup tear or a crescent tear and uh, samantha sir will fit in somewhere in reverse shape l shaped or uh, kind of a tear if you look at the hairs that are there on our head cup tear retraction is important because it helps us to plan whether we need to salvage the cuff or we need to plan a tendon transfer or we need to augment this kind of a cuff with some other tissue so that we can you know, give a better function to the patient there are three grades classified by patte and you should know about it but the whole classification has come into clear picture once dr polen and his team gave us this classification of full thickness cuff tear and the most common cuff tears that we encounter in our clinical practice is type c where the upper part of the subcap is torn the supra and the infra are torn or it is only the supra and infra that are torn very rarely in our clinical practice we will see a type c tear or in this combination whether it is type a or type b so most common tears that we encounter in clinical practice are type c and type d so why we should study the cuff tears because as we all have been taught from time immemorial that if we don't repair our cuff well if we encounter a cuff tear in an elderly or if we encounter a cuff tear in a compromised patient or if the quality of the bone is not great and the repair is too tight then there is even if you repair a cuff there is a possibility that the cuff can go for retear and that we are always skeptical in announcing it up front to the patient that yes we will repair your cuff but there is a possibility that you can come back to us with the retear with this doubt in mind if the patient goes back he will never come back to you with the uh, uh, confidence that he wants a repair or restoration of his cuff shoulder function so there are many biological strategies that are coming into play now that will help us you know uh, giving us better results which are basically the biological factors that are there in the shoulder in the form of locally available biological uh, cells or you can you know augment it by injecting it from outside or using scaffolds so all these are available in the market but what is available next to the cuff is the one that we need to highlight and study in this uh, 10 15 minutes of our uh, lecture now we also have been uh, taught in the past that if the cuff is weak or if the repair is weak we also will use something called as a dermal halo graft or a graft jacket that can augment your uh, uh, cuff tissues or interpose between the cuff tissues to get a reasonable repair and outcome for the patient so is that feasible in our setup will that not add to the cost of the patient these are the things Uh, that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about you know how we can repair a cuff and how we can repair it economically this is a nice study which nobody wants to go back and samantha and pradeep will agree with me that this was one of the nice studies and the nice way of repairing the cuff and getting a good outcome but 
i will tell you in the end if you have time to discuss in panel why this study is uh, doesn't you know importance when we repair a cup here you can see that in snyder study there was a massive cup tear which is probably type 2 going into type 3 patte and this is how they have done a decent repair and you can see this fracture micro fractures on the greater tuberosity and then you can see the new cells that are coming out of this when the cup pump is pressure is reduced these are the cells which you know uh, populate this tendon which is probably avascular and then when at the end of one year when they see that in follow up an mri study is done and you can see that the footprint is restored nicely and you see the tide mark between the healthy tissue and the tissue that is forming is akin to a normal tissue why don't we practice every day in day out we have been taught to do single row double row and double bridge triple bridge what not but is it possible to restore it in a very biological way with less cost to the patient that is a point we should think if such a kind of uh, tear we encounter the latest thing that is coming out of the editorial commentary of uh, journal of arthroscopy and other analogies is it possible to cut into a way and the fibrovascular nature of the bursa itself to augment our repair and get better results so these are the things that is crossing the minds of the researchers across the globe and yes is there evidence to say that these cells do help in uh, uh, augmenting your cup repair and giving good function if you can see this uh, basic research that has been done uh, by dr schulz and team you can see that this was the bursa was found to have a highly vascular network with msc cells which have got great potential to uh, populate the cuff and also help the cuff in healing and bringing about great results and in this potential is the one which need to tap and uh, look at in the coming days to improve our results in cuff surgery is there any evidence are anybody practicing this if you can see this current paper that is come out of turkey you can see that their functional results of a partial cup tear repair where bursal side tears were noticed were great you can see both the functional outcome by the constant score as well as the asc scores have significantly improved compared to the pre operative value so if you can see these multipotent cells are characterized by different kind of cells and tissues which have got potential to help um the tendon in healing so if you can spend some time on looking at this graph and the cells that are there in the bursa what are those if you can see that there is number 1 you have a tight fibrovascular structure which has got great potential with stem cells in it there are different mscs that you can see they are there which have got potential for adipogenic uh, activity osteogenic activity neurogenic activity as well as mechano responsiveness and also we have important cells which are tenogenic which will help populate the tendons and increase the girth and the health of the tendon what happens when the cuff is torn in the initial few days if you can concentrate on the graph that is there on the screen if you can see these cells within the first few days up to the seventh day or on you can have only the adipogenic and the chondrogenic cells but as the day progress is as you appear closer to the 14th day and from there onwards you can see that it will be basically the tenogenic cells that will populate and that are there in, inside the bursa and if you allow these cells to populate the cuff that you are repairing there is a possibility that they will augment your cuff repair and the cuff can heal better you also can see from this basic research study that is given in this uh, paper which is currently under um, uh press review you can see the quality of bone whether it is a cortical bone or it is a cancellous bone both the area as well as the thickness of the bone increases and it simulates the normal one bi and br are the representative of the normal and the tissue where uh, it has been repaired so you can see that when the cuff is repaired as well as when the cuff 
at great when you do the trabecular pattern as well as the cortical bone morphometry simulates when you repair the bursa along with the cuff so with this background should we not think that over the years we were taken for a ride uh, by various um, literature from the west saying that you have to remove the bursa when you are doing a cuff repair because it is important that it will cause neurogenic pain it will that is a cause for pain we have been all advised and taught like that but we have never told that this is got a rich uh, vascular structure it has got msc cells which will populate the tendons and which will improve the quality of the bone when such a situation is there is it not that the chance of retears will be less and failures will be less this is a question that we need to ponder in the next few months to years when you all try to repair our cuff and knock off the bursa for no reason so my suggestion would be if you look at the research by marcus shibel and his team they are now harping on saying that you need to prepare preserve the bursa and repair it along with the cuff repair to get great results my own good friend deepak bhatia also has published who is our own colleague from mumbai where he along with the tendon he repaired the bursa and published a technique in the journal of arthroscopy and went on to say that yes together if you preserve the bursa and repair it along with it the results might be better than repairing the tendon alone so yes the food for thought for today's gathering would be yes we need to repair the cuff when it is torn and when it is needed but we all should look at a biological healing and provide as much as biology for the a better outcome of a cuff surgery in our small experience we have operated around six males and nine females with various type of cuff tears the average was between years and 52 years most of them underwent cuff repair with subacromial bursal augmentation the minimum follow up for these patients is one year all these patients who were wanting to be a part of the study have been included only where the friable bursal tissue was there we were skeptical of repairing them and those lost for follow up you are not included in the study this is how a cuff tear will look when you take an mri and i am happy to share one of the cases here where there is a massive cuff tear full thickness if you can go through this uh, video this is an inflamed tissue which is seen from inside that is your subscapularis you can see the massive rotator cuff tear and you can see also the bursal uh, biceps tendon the cuff was retracted and it was delaminated de right some releases were done and it is possible to bring the cuff only up to the level of the articular margin that is a thick bursa sometimes we repair which will be similar to the cuff so we planned a simple single row repair of this kind of a tear i generally use all suture anchor which is triple loaded because more the bites into the cuff we can see that we will be able to reduce it nicely at the end without much tension anti grade suture passers are used in this fashion to pass your sutures from anterior to posterior you can see the bird be coming from posterior but while fixing the cuff on to the greater trochanter greater tuberosity we start fixing the cuff from posterior to anterior to get better reduction of the cuff that is how the cuff was retracted and you can see on to the head of the humerus the fashion like this now the sutures that remain you can see the blue light blue sutures which are there can be kept intact and then rerouted again through the bursa in this fashion and tagged on to the surface of the cuff in such a fashion so once you get this without much tension you can cut all your sutures and you can see that the cuff is repaired nicely this is a case of a massive cuff tear wherein the bursa was repaired on to the torn cuff here is another case if you can see there is a partial cuff tear we can see a very thin bursa is there on the anterior side of the cuff under the subacromial but as you go posteriorly you will get a good bursa 
the cuff was marked with the help of a proline suture in this fashion and we take vulcan and find out where is the cuff that is delaminated so once we know that this is the area where the cuff is torn we make sure that the bursa as well as the cuff are able to be reduced a single loaded triple uh, single anchor triple loaded is used you can see that the cuff is uh, repaired and you can see the bursa from the anterior as well as the posterior are tried to be sutured on to the same area where the cuff was repaired with the sutures that are kept intact without being cut so there is not much of cost that is added when you try a bursal repair with the same anchors that you use the cuff repair so in such a fashion you can see that the bursa was also repaired on to the pasta tear once that is done we need to follow up these patients with regular uh, physiotherapy it is not different from any other uh, cuff repair that you do it is a standard protocol that we follow in our institution and patients depend and whether we are treating with the torture from the theater you will be up in the ward without much pain on second or third day they can go home uh, pain free there this is a one year follow up of a school headmaster you can see that he is happy and he has got back to his uh, profession in the co college here in bangalore and uh, he is very thankful for what you have done for him so what would be the advantage of such a cuff repair it is a natural tissue which is available locally which has got msc cells and rich in fibrovascular structure it it helps in immediate pain relief of the patients which comes at no added cost and no extra instrumentation is required to you know repair such a bursa on to the uh, cuff we have been taught to kill the bursa and use a patch on a cuff repair which is not a good idea at no cost to the patient and that no burden to the economy of the patient's purse it also helps in maintaining a good bony architecture in the wake area where the cuff is torn for a long period of time so the limitations could be we need to identify to preserve the bursa there could be selection bias because it is a single center study we also need to have a control group if we have to say that bursa really works in a massive cuff tear or a pasta where the the results can be compared and uh, really put across for a really scientific data to be analyzed long term studies may be needed in our country for such a study but i am sure the first ball or the first step to be taken uh, from uh, this group in the coming years to try how bursa can help augmenting a cuff repair so the take home points from my end for this august gathering this evening would be rotator cuff tear outcomes can be improved how they can be improved try to use the local tissue that is available which has got great potential for healing and providing great um, value for fibrovascular nature and the cells that provide healing and the tenocytes that populate the tendon and provide it to be robust and near normal like what god has given so with this my humble appeal to this august gathering that is viewing my lecture and the opportunity that is given in the coming days i will be contesting for the ia selections as a vice president kindly cast your valuable vote in my favor thank you once again ladies and gentlemen thank you god bless thank you thank you sir for your nice presentation uh, any any questions to sir from the august gatherings and let's i think uh, my regards uh, to professor amravati this is sir. dr samantha from calcutta sir namaskar sir thing is that this is the new concept probably people are trying to do with the uh, preservation of the your bursal tissue hum, uh, over the over the cuff even now they are taking telling that don't save up anything 
uh, whatever you see under the acrylic and preserve everything just for the blood supply and all these message caramel and all these things. But it is very hard to basically see during the arthroscopy the cup uh, tissue during the repair. So we have uh, lessened the resection of the whole bursal tissue, whatever is possible. Still, I do resect some of the cuff tissue, some of the bursal tissue from there. So is it by my question to you, do you find any difficulty or what is your take on taking nothing from the uh, acromial side? It is a very great question from an experienced teacher. And I'm honored that it, this question has come from Dr. Samantha. Because sir has been doing uh, these kind of surgeries even before I started. So I'm happy that such a question has come from sir. Um, if you can see uh, what Deepak has put up in his uh, paper, how the bursa is arranged. The bursa on the anterior side of the cuff is thin. Posterior side of the cuff is thicker. And that posterior cuff continues to be uh, in continuity with the lateral bursa as well. It is easy, very easy to find a bursal tissue if there is a partial cuff tear. There is no big deal about it. But the challenge comes when the cuff is massively torn or if it is retracted up to the glenoid. In such scenario, the what I suggest would be when you are doing your subacromial decompression, it should be kept to the minimal. And basically, you should use your Vulcan rather than using your aggressive shavers to clear the bursa from the cuff. You start in a very uh, low speed, especially in the anterior part of your cuff under the acromion. And try to identify two layers that will definitely be seen between the cuff and the normal tissue, that is the bursa. Most of the bursa would have retracted posteriorly. So your um, concentration most would be from the uh, preserving the posterior bursa. So when you identify that the bursa is more posterior and highly vascular, you are definitely to get some amount of tissue that can come at least to the middle third or the infraspinatus tissue. If you are getting up to the infraspinatus tissue, then it is a win-win situation for you if you have an intact subscap. Or if your subscap repair is great, and then you add bursa to your infraspinatus repair onto the uh, cuff, then I am sure your patient will be very thankful and you will do better in the post-op when you come and see. Yes, there would be a challenge for novices to, you know, uh, identify the bursa. But yes, we need to make the first beginning. And then probably in the coming days, you will yourself become an expert to identify a cuff and a bursa. Hope that answers my question, Dr. Samantha. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. So I think un until and otherwise you become very, very expert like Amrabati sir, or it is very difficult to see. Well, basically, sometimes we don't use the saver at, as such on the bursal side because if you use the saver and suction, then your vision goes off. It starts bleeding. Yeah. So you have to be very... And the problem is the posterior bursa. <laughs> Anterior bursa is very thin. Posterior bursa, basically, we just take as minimal as possible just to see the the extent of the infraspinatus u shaped tear or extent of the infraspinatus or whatever is on the backside. Otherwise, even if you touch the backside, it starts bleeding. So, inevitably, we save the bursa that way. Yeah. I, I must admit here in this Congress, and this is the first Congress where I am admitting very frankly, uh, most of my bursal sparing surgeries in the initial part of our study was basically for pasta kind of lesions, whether it is bursal or articular sites. But off late, when a question was asked from an August, uh, uh, in an August gathering by one of my very good friend from Mumbai, he posed the question from the floor saying that, yes, I understand that you can preserve the bursa if there is a pasta lesion, where it is bursa or an articular side tear because the lesion is minimal. What about if it is a massive cuff tear? That set me thinking that, you know, why I should not look for a bursa which is torn in a massive cuff tear also. So that is when we started reinventing and revisiting our surgeries and trying to plan it in such a way that, as Samantha sir was telling, it is difficult to preserve the bursa. But yes, we need to look for it. And then I am sure in the coming days, you will be able to preserve some amount of bursa that will add value to your cuff repair.
sorry to interrupt, sir. That's very, very sure. nice. Uh, I think we are getting, getting a little short of time. Uh, can we discuss further later on? No uh, problem. Thank you I so much. Dr. Pradeep to please start with his second talk. Then I'll request Dr. Subandhu, sir. Dr. Pradeep, please take over. Thank you so much uh, for uh, considering me worthy of uh, this uh, August uh, gathering here. Uh, I will be sharing uh, some of my experiences about mini open um, uh, RCT repair pros and cons. And I would like to take up uh, um, from where Dr. Um, Amrauti has left and that is the uh, Bursa. Uh, before I start my talk, I, I, I would like to say that, you know, Preserving the bursa is extremely, extremely easy um, uh, when you are doing a mini open cup repair, um, whether it is a, a pasta kind of a tear or a bursal kind of a tear or a massive tear. I will come to that later. Uh, that, and that would be one of my pros of mini open uh, rotary cup repair. But regarding the rest of the pros and cons, I would like to discuss. So that's the place where I work, that is KM Hospital. Okay, um, I did my fellowship um, in orthoscopy in uh, 2013, and that's Dr. James Chaw, who was the president of ANA. And uh, I, uh, my uh, technique of uh, mini open cup repair, I owe to him. Um, only when he told me that uh, um, all those uh, cases which he did mini open, uh, anecdotally, um, uh, they did much better than his open cup, uh, the, the arthroscopic cup repair. And then he shifted to mini open cup repair after 20, 25 years of orthoscopic cup repair. And that gave me the confidence of uh, you know, doing this uh, you know, surgery. And this is a very good saying that is uh, taught to us in KEM. Uh, is ability to perform a technique is not an indication to perform it on a patient. So many a times we are um, kind of blinded by the clam sham that comes with a, a technique, which is, you know, uh, um, technically much more uh, um, sound looking, uh, requires much of the stuff and uh, industry uh, uh, pushes it. And then uh, we want to perform it on a patient. However, uh, uh, just because we are able to perform that technique is not an indication to perform it on a patient. So uh, in a way, then why would, how would one choose one technique over the other? So one with the better result should always be chosen, whether it's difficult, whether it's easy, whether it's cheap, whether it's expensive, does not matter. If it is giving better results, then it should always be chosen. Now, if there are two techniques which are giving similar results, then what? Then a simple and cost-effective technique should be used uh, if they're the same results. So now, now proposed advantages of orthoscopy over um, uh, open uh, method, or in other words, uh, they may be a cons of an open procedure would be um, whether they cause better outcome, uh, they cause less post-operative pain, uh, they cause less stiffness, and they are cost-effective. And then again, there are technical aspects uh, which comes uh, with the open surgery, whether we will be able to add, uh, address the AC joint, whether we, are, we will be able to address the subscapularis, whether we will be able to do interval releases, coracohumeral adhesions, capsular release and biceps, all these again comes uh, into picture when we are uh, contemplating an open repair because uh, uh, in last two to three decades it has been um, again and again told to us that orthoscopic uh, repair is the panacea and uh, there are many lacunae of open repair and as uh, Dr. Amrati told in his talk there are many things that are told to us uh, and we don't think about it or why they are told uh, but yes uh, this is one of the things that is told uh, to us. Now let's see the literature uh, regarding the outcome of an open repair versus uh, 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 orthoscopic repair. Now, uh, before I uh, jump into that, um, the, there is a little bit of doubt about the nomenclature of cuff repair, what is a mini open repair and what is a uh, what is an uh, open repair. Um, I don't want to go into that uh, uh, much of this. Uh, let's say uh, an an orthoscopic repair versus a mini open or open repair. Now, uh, uh, if you see this meta analysis systematic review, again, it says the uh, orthoscopic and mini open cup repair, they have similar outcome. Another study, so we are 
trying to see this now meta-analysis. This is a meta-analysis that is published 2014. There are no difference in the outcome. Another uh, comprehensive review and meta-analysis, there is no difference that has been found in orthoscopic and mini open repair. Another study, uh, again, clinical outcome of rotator cuff repair in 100 patients, that's RCT, and their, their outcome, pain, range of motion, and complication do not significantly differ in either of the techniques. Uh, another study, again, is an RCT. These are not small studies. They are proper RCTs and meta-analysis. And they say that both the study give uh, uh, good results, uh, however, and they, they have substantially equal outcome, except for little retear rate is a little bit higher in orthoscopic uh, repair group, and uh, that can be discussed later. Uh, another study, again, if you see uh, quality of life. Now, if you see, there is no difference in the quality of, of life uh, with respect to subject and objective outcome, whether you do orthoscopic or mini open uh, rotator cuff repair. Another study has midterm follow-up. Again, there is no results. And these are all recent uh, studies that have been published in, in the 2010s and um, uh, onwards. So that is regarding the outcome. So it's pretty sure uh, that there is no, uh, see even I am not included in my study, but the latest Cochrane update again shows that there is no um, uh, outcome wise, there's no difference between open cuff repair versus and uh, a mini open cuff repair. Now, let's see. Uh, people uh, would argue that yes, the final outcome is same, but the early phase pain um, uh, may be less in arthroscopic because it's a minimally invasive surgery. And um, let's see how the literature says about it. Again, 2012 study, there is no significant difference between early uh, post operative period uh, pain with respect to open or mini open uh, cuff repair. Uh, another study, again, a systematic review, there is no statistical difference uh, with respect to the post-operative uh, ACS, UCLA, or pain scores uh, in this, both the group. Again, another study means we, are, we have studies after studies, and uh, you, if you see there are uh, hardly any difference between these um, uh, 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 techniques with respect to early post-operative pain as well. So that goes another uh, proposed advantage of uh, arthroscopic technique. What about stiffness? Now they say, okay, if you do an open cuff repair, there can be deltoid adhesion, the patient is going to uh, uh, land up in stiffness. Again, in another study, there's no the cases of intractable stiffness and no case of deltoid damage in you know, open cuff repair. And it really uh, makes um, a point, uh, you know, when we are doing all other open surgeries like uh, proximal humerus fracture and the nailings and all, then at that point, we don't speak about this. And just when it comes to comparing an arthroscopic repair versus a, a mini open repair and we talk to, you know, people bombard us, no, 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 open is going to cause stiffness. And whereas our uh, massive surgeries such as total shoulder and liver shoulder, uh, they do not cause any stiffness. You know, that is a point to ponder upon. Uh, regarding the cost, now it's an extremely important thing in our setting uh, to look about the cost and uh, mini open rotator cuff repair significantly less operative time and it's significantly less expensive than ortho, all orthoscopic repair because with orthoscopic repair, we have more surgical time and we have all the paraphernalia that comes with orthoscopy, all the cannulae, the RAF and all, um, and the, the number of anchors are more used in um, uh, orthoscopic repair. So the, uh, definitely the cost is going to be very, very high um, uh, with respect to the uh, uh, yeah, in, in arthroscopic technique. In my practice, if uh, the cost of arthroscopic, uh, cost to patient for so arthroscopic surgery with, with related to, to paraphernalia is at least four to five times higher uh, than in a mini open technique. Again, uh, if, uh, if you do a cost analysis, again, if see the, uh, the arthroscopic has same result, however, higher cost with respect to mini open cuff repair. What about cosmesis? Look at this patient and look at how small scar they can have. And uh, even if they have bigger scar, it really does not make a difference because most of these are old patients and they do not wear dresses like this. So uh, I don't think so cosmesis is any uh, issue that needs to be considered. Now coming back to the, the cuff repair. So our aim is always a good rotator cuff repair and good rotator cuff repair uh, requires a good anatomy reconstitution and good biology as Dr. Amrauti uh, has uh, told to us, uh, told us in the last talk, uh, how important biology is and how important the anatomical cuff repair is. And uh, we see an articular in an RCT repair 
can be a good repair or a bad repair. And a good repair can be orthoscopic as well as any mini open. And a bad repair again can be orthoscopic or mini open. Our focus should be on giving a good repair and not the technique. Whether you are using orthoscopic or mini open does not matter. Our focus should be on a good doing a good repair. And when we say good repair, that means a good reconstitution of the anatomy and providing a very good biology. Uh, <clears throat> so now uh, coming to arthroscopic rotator cuff repair, it is technically demanding. We know it's, it requires time. These are learning curves. This needs to be instrumentation dependent as to the experience and their implants. Um, um, so we do mini open technique and uh, it is definitely helpful uh, to decrease the surgical anesthesia time. It has economical issue and uh, you can very well go ahead to repair all the supraspinata, supra plus infra, and a superior subscap tear with very easily with mini open technique. There are incisions that are various incisions that are described in the literature. One was uh, mid acromial incision, so that is the least favored incision. Uh, the another incision is the anterior, uh, um, the incision parallel to the lateral bar of acromion uh, along the Langer's line, a cosmetically very good incision like this uh, uh, along the lat uh, anterior line of the uh, acromion <clears throat> like that. So small incision surgery can be done. That's the uh, that's the, uh, um, the slide from my uh, mentor's uh, PPT. And um, however, I do this incision that is a, a vertical incision uh, along the anterior line of the acromion parallel to the anterior clavicular line. That is what I do because I, I can increase it upwards and downwards to go to AC joint uh, if required. Uh, if you see the axillary nerve, the axillary nerve uh, anteriorly is six centimeter distal to the anterior point of the acromion. So there is a lot of safety factor over there. So we don't need to worry about axillary nerve. So we take the skin incision, we infiltrate with this um, uh, adrenaline to decrease the bleeding. Um, look at uh, after giving adrenaline, we get a very good field. We identify the deltoid uh, fascia, then we can uh, take the vertical split incision in the deltoid like this. Or if it is required to remove the anterior edge of the acromion, we can take a small T-shaped incision like this. <laughs> so if you see the deltoid fibers like this, the anterior one-third and posterior two-third fibers, uh, they are parallel over there. So even if you go anteriorly along the line of the clavicle, uh, even if you take off the mm, deltoid from the anterior aspect of the uh, acromion, they are not at 90 degree and uh, they heal beautifully later on. So we do acromioplasty either at the beginning of the surgery or at the end, depending upon what your preference uh, like this. Uh, you may or may not remove bursa. So before, uh, you know, we used to take, uh, uh, take out the bursa. Nowadays, we just split it and just put a cross piece and split the anterior half, anterior and posterior posteriorly. And the end of that, we can just repair it with a simple white wheel and that reconstitutes the bursa very well. I'll show you that later. So that's how we uh, take out the bursa. Then we expose the cuff. We, uh, we 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 uh, identify the cuff morphology and we know how important it is to know whether it's a reverse L T shape or L shape here and uh, uh, with mini open it really gives you that panoramic view uh, with which you can identify the tear you can give uh, traction in multiple direction to actually see the exact anatomy sometimes there can be lamination it becomes very easy for us to identify this. Uh, with the mini open technique. So look at this tier. So this tier it was a, v, a very large U-shaped tier, but if you uh, hold a simple um, edge and bring it, you, you know that you know it, it is not a crescent shaped tier, it's just a L-shaped tier. And it's very easily, it can be um, uh, uh, found out. So you take it and just bring it, how easily? See if I'm put, pulling it posterly, it doesn't repair, but if I pull it until it really nicely covers the entire head, and a, a massive looking cuff tear can be easily tackled if we know the anatomy properly. So that's how about uh, the tear morphology or sometimes you can have a tear like that and this is a T-shaped tear uh, like this along uh, this thing and wherein we can actually uh, approximate the anterior and posterior edge of the uh, cuff uh, to make it as a T-shaped tear. So that's how we see. So it is very easy to identify the tear morphology and that's how it will help you to reconstitute the morphology. Another uh, example. Another example of uh, the cuff tear morphology. We can see how the cuff is. We are looking from the top, and that's the cuff. We can see the bicep tendon, 
has the bicep tendon. You can see that the cuff is cuff tear is going into the rotator interval tissue. So that's the one part. That's the another part, and we can see how there are the fry the the tissue is friable on the rotator interval tissue, and these are the typical tears that occurs because of the anti impingement uh, and the entire bicep polygate damage. And we can have sometimes lamination or uh, multiple layer tear. So it's very becomes very easy uh, to identify the cuff morphology, and you can reduce the cuff even uh, before you tie the sutures off. So next step is uh, to prepare the greater tuberosity, what is called as a reverse subacromial decompression. So very often we see this 90 degree angle of the rotator cuff uh, of the GT, and that is the the spur that get formed there. That is because of the reactionary bone formation. And then we need to just take off that bone, rasp it out. We can do microfracture to get that crimson duvet, rounding of the GT, this thing. And then we have various repair technique. Anything, anything is possible. You can do transosseous, you can do single row, double row. So my technique is this uh, 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 a modified double row technique, uh, uh, which is a, a, a technique which uh, takes uh, help of a horizontal transosseous tunnel and by which I save on the two lateral row anchors. Uh, so that is become makes me extremely cost effective. So step one is to identify the cuff tear. Step two is to uh, place holding sutures. Step three is to pass the medial um, uh, row anchor that is at the articular margin. You can use a double or triple loaded anchor depending upon the cuff tear. Then you reduce the cuff uh, uh, and then pass the suture strategically so that you are not going to unduly pull some units uh, tight and some units lax. And that is extremely good advantage of mini open technique because you can reduce and tie this uh, cuff, uh, cuff prior to uh, passing the suture so that there are equal tension on all the sutures uh, based on your tear morphology. That's how we uh, uh, the, uh, strategically remove the sutures and then we crisscross them just to create a suture bridge. Sometimes you can do a speed uh, so, uh, uh, to create a speed bridge. If required, you can even create a speed uh, suture bridge by tying the medial. Uh, this thing. Then you make uh, a horizontal tunnel using a, a number five ethibon needle uh, from the lateral crest of the bicep tendon, which is a very, very strong area of the bone. And then we cross the posterior suture anteriorly and tie them to a fellow sutures. And thus it creates a, a double row effect without using the lateral row anchor. So the horizontal tunnel really uh, takes uh, makes a job of two lateral row anchor. And we can really uh, nicely get that footprint uh, repair as Dr. Amrauti has shown in his talk earlier. And that's how the, the cuff tear looks. And that's at the end of the surgery. It's a very small incision and the entire job can be done. Um, if you see massive cuff, now look at this massive cuff, repair massive cuff, a huge looking cuff, just a simple stitch. And you know, you can, it's a huge, so uh, it, the look, the head is looking like Dr. Amrauti's head here. So we can uh, see that the entire head is open and then we can just, uh, uh, repair it very easily with this uh, kind of a technique uh, and with minimal anchors, hardly one or two. Very rarely I have to use three anchors, mostly one or two anchors and uh, the job is done. And that gives a very robust kind of repair and you can test it under uh, your vision. Uh, you can rotate it, you can, and the best part again is that the mini open cup repair is done in adducted position to bring the GT out. So you do not uh, over tension the uh, uh, cup repair Otherwise, if you do a surgery in abducted position, the cuff repair easy, is easy, but as soon as you bring the head down, the tension of the cuff repair. So in mini open cuff repair, since it is in adducted position, whatever tension that is created in the surgery, the maximum tension that the patient's uh, cuff repair is going to ever endure uh, later on the period. So that's how the cuff repair goes. The medial row as a single and the transosseous tunnel as a, as, a, as a second row, and that's how uh, it goes. And that's how they function. These patients are extremely happy. The deltoid split is not at all morbid. They, they, they go, go home very uh, happily. So look at this patient. Now it's a massive cup tear uh, preoperatively. And you know, you can we cannot move. I'll just skip the video for the sake of time here. And then uh, this is his tear. So it, you can see supra, infra, everything is gone. And that's how um, it is. Uh, uh, is seen so we can see very characteristically that anterior sac acromial spur and I think this is an extremely important thing that you, know, you can just uh, um, uh, demonstrate the impingement intraoperatively you just forward flex it and you can relate that anterior edge of the uh, acromion directly into the cuff 
and we know that this is the impediment that is causing the cup tear. And uh, pass us traction stitches, a massive looking cup, or uh, some part of it is type two there, we can see that. And again, that is advantageous. We don't need to take off that tissue. Um, uh, those That part of the cup that is type two, we can again end-to-end -end, uh, repair it. So we can see that the type two tear, some part, the posterior part is type two, and still we can um, uh, kind of repair that uh, cuff. So, so how, how beautifully the anatomy uh, can be recreated, even in a massive tear, uh, can be demonstrated here. Just because we are getting a panoramic view of the cuff. And then that's how we pass the cuff. Again, as we reduce the cuff and pass the strategically. So we keep the traction stitch on and then you pass at equidistance so that no, there is no undue pressure on any of the cuff material. And then we uh, do a, a transosseous tunnel and suture in suture technique to um, uh, uh, shuttle those posterior sutures entirely. And then that's how the cuff repair goes. So even a massive looking cuff uh, can be repaired very, very easily in a very small uh, incision. Now look at this high grade bursal tear. So this is a very high grade bursal tear. Again, uh, uh, so all cuff tear, all the types can be. So again, we can see that entire age of the acromion and that the bursal tear, and we can easily uh, demonstrate it. And the, the bursa is very well spared because we, I, it's not included in the video, but we just swipe it anteriorly and posteriorly. Maybe by the end of this uh, session, I will be able to uh, get the video of uh, bursal preservation if required. And then uh, you can really uh, demonstrate that impingement and take uh, care and make at the end of the surgery, there is no impingement there. And that's how the cuff, uh, uh, we can see that the, 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 the fibers of this is, are intact and only the bursal fibers are retracted and how, how easily they can be uh, brought uh, into picture without even complete need to complete the tear. And that's how we repair it. And that's what is the uh, function of the patient. Another, another cuff. Now look at this lamellated cuff tear. So this is a very bad looking cuff tear. And there are multiple lamellae here. Inside, we can see. And then you can just pass traction stitches, reduce the cuff to the, the level you want. And you can then repair the cuff in the way you want it in a very robust way. And at the end of this, again, look at, look at this. We can repair the bursa. So that is the bursa repair. Just with vital stitches, we can repair the bursa. So that is the bursa we have repaired over the um, uh, um, uh, cuff repair, and that's the incision. Now, regarding subcortical adhesion, there are a lot of times question has been asked how to uh, remove the subcortical adhesion. It's pretty simple. So we can see the bicep tendon that is right in the front of us. That's bicep tendon. That's the cuff tear rotator on the rotator interval, and you just all you need is. Uh, Take the uh, uh, scissor, palpate the coracoid. So my finger is palpating the was palpating the coracoid. And you just cut those coracohumeral bands, and that's done. So all all uh, para things that is required in orthoscopy, you know, we take at least five, four to five minutes to cover. It just requires ten seconds here. So you can just very easily cut those just with the two forceps and the scissor. Now look at this again. Another bursal surface tear. We can see how beautifully uh, the bursal surface tear is seen. And we can, uh, this superior rear can be, uh, if you see all this uh, trapezoidal tear, but the superior rear can be easily brought into place. Only small amount of tendon loss is there and that can be repaired very well. Okay, then we can use subacromial depressor. If you have, you can use a subacromial depressor. This way you can even uh, reach the, uh, the superior part of the glenoid and you can even do the, uh, the, the, the SCR if it is needed. You can use another uh, other configuration. So this is a Kuroda configuration, which is technically very difficult orthoscopically by many open. It is just a piece of cake. And without using any anchor, we can do such a robust repair of a very massive cuff. Uh, sometimes you have a retracted tear, which we, you need to do medialization. So you can very, again, very easily, you can do it. You can just take a uh, bird and just uh, go ahead and medialize this tunnel and you can do all the techniques. 
So it's a very simple technique. It allows anatomical repair. It's cost effective. Deltoid splitting is not at all morbid. To improve the ease of surgery, you can use orthoscopy instruments and suture shuttler devices and uh, bursa preservation. That is one of the biggest advantages. We don't have to cut the bursa. You just split it and swipe it anteriorly and posteriorly and just at the end of the surgery, put two vacuole stitches on, on the uh, these and job is done. So this is uh, the video which I generally like to share. Um, this is based on the old Nirma ad. I, I hope you see the, uh, I hope you know, uh, you are able to uh, see the audio. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep, for mm. such a nice conclusion to your topic. Uh, quickly, if there is some short questions to Dr. Pradeep, yeah. then we move to Surindu, sir. Mm. Uh, uh, you beef about some uh, post-operative management uh, starting rehabilitation. <laughs> so uh, I, I am pretty aggressive about. Uh, yeah, I am pretty aggressive about. <laughs> um, so background number one or here was some background noise coming. If you can, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, 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 again, that is a pretty. I, I don't know um, uh, whether it is an advantage, but um, uh, since we have done the cuff repair in an adapted position, I am not at all bothered about the tension in the cuff that is going to be there um, in the post operative. All I need to do is little bit gravity elimination, and I, with the gravity elimination, I start passive range of motion as early as four to five days, and we aim at complete passive abduction at four to six weeks mark. And at six weeks, we start uh, active mobilization. By three months, the patient is able to do anything that he wants, except uh, lifting weights and all uh, heavy activity, which we tell them to do at nine months to one year mark. Okay, nice. So any more questions, please? Yeah, sir. I'm Ravdi, sir. Deep, sir, uh, I must congratulate you on the vast experience that you have got uh, in open cuff repair. This is an art which I am sure everybody should start with, then graduate to be a scopy surgeon. Because the bailout for a tight situation in a arthroscopic surgery is your uh, uh, experience of you know opening the tissues and then seeing it for self. Because all arthroscopy surgeries have evolved out of how the open surgeons have experienced. So I am sure Pradeep will be much. Uh, Happy to share his experience in the coming days with all the younger generations in the country. And I'm sure this is an art which is uh, which everybody should learn. And I'm sure it will be helpful as a, you know, adjunct for your all the skills that you have. And I'm sure and thankful for Pradeep for highlighting that Parsa still needs to be preserved and can be preserved even in open surgeries. And I'm sure Samantha sir would be happy that he can still access the surgeries and uh, have an uh, open access to the bursa. Samantha, I, sir, your I thoughts? Agree. Definitely. In the open side, also you can see I better. Agree. I agree with uh, what sir said, except for the one word, uh, the word called uh, graduate to orthoscopy. I, 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 so when you say something to graduate to orthoscopy, that means you, you do one technique and then to graduate to do something better and you know do something other. And I think it is rather not the graduation, rather a choice. Whether you want to do orthoscopic repair or a mini open cup repair, because literature says that both have equal results. And um, so I don't think so. The word graduating to orthoscopy should be used. You can say choice of orthoscopy. That is the only uh, <laughs> thing which I wanted to. Uh, English is a very funny language. You can you know, twist the <laughs> way, whichever way you want. But yes, I am sure uh, Pradeep has got vast experience in open surgeries. And I'm sure uh, what we are seeing today is a mastery of how we can, you know, really have tricky situations so easily done across uh, different uh, time frames. Actually. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, uh, may I request Dr. Samantha, sir, so to please uh, share his uh, wisdom about this topic. Yeah, I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. Is it coming? It's, we are audible. You are audible. 
Okay, you just once it what this comes in the screen, just tell me. Okay. Okay. I think the debate uh, uh, of doing this, whether to mini open the or the maxi one or the mini one or the arthroscopic one, it, it is never ending, because some people they were tell that mini open they are very happy because they can see see whatever the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, even they can repair the subscap. I know very big guns, those who are doing some part arthroscopic and the, when the repair job comes, they just open it and repair, put the anchors and they go ahead. Is my screens coming, sir? Not yet, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I think it will come. Yes. It's coming, sir. It's coming. So I think uh, what Pradeep has told us or shown us, uh, me, Dr. Amravati sir, and those who are doing all arthroscopic rotator cuff repair, we have all done this mini mini techniques. Because unless you do the, uh, unless you master in doing the mini technique, it is very, very difficult to go ahead with the all arthroscopic technique. Because handling the uh, the rotator cuff is uh, is it coming, sir? The picture is coming now. Uh, Hello. No, it's it's yeah, it's coming. The the scopic picture has come in now. Oh. Okay. Okay. Just uh, just uh, just hold for a second here. You can see this if you if you what Pradeep has shown us with the open technique with the mini open technique because we can see the cuff tissue better, but thing is that those those who argue with the arthroscopic technique they will always argue that those who go with the mini open technique probably they don't get such a beautiful vision of the cuff tissue or they don't see whatever is happening inside the joint plus but you have to master the technique now you see this is a absolutely absolutely uh, degenerated cuff tissue and some people those who argue whether you can manage the your biceps with your mini open technique that is a difficulty whether you can do it or not now you can see that the here the biceps is completely been frayed down and i am doing the intraarticular biceps stenosis first so managing the sutures in the all arthroscopic technique is a very very difficult job i think those who are willing to master the all arthroscopic calf repair they have to first master the open technique, then the mini open technique, then gradually they have to master step by step how to go ahead with the all arthroscopic technique. Because nowadays, whatever, because we started doing the probably arthroscopic technique when this sort of anti-grade or the retrograde passes were not available so freely to everybody. So nowadays we can pass the sutures, passing the sutures, retrograde or anti-grade, so many things are available. So when we started do, doing the, the anti-grade suture passer, the passing the suture, again the catching, it was not simultaneous. Now you see, I have passed the lasso loop for the biceps tendon. Now I have doing now I am doing the intra-articular biceps tenodesis at the front of it and just at the top of the bicepital groove. Now, as I told you, because I am going to present arthroscopically how you do how, how, now you can see how much the calf is retracted and if, if you see the calf the calf is sometimes when you see the, this sort of degenerated calf you'll be seeing that there is deep delamination even the, when you study your mri pictures also we can see the delaminated calf here and we can see how much it is retracted whether it is at the middle of the humeral head or it has gone beyond the humeral head so when he has gone up to the middle mid midline or the middle of the humeral head, probably mobilization of the calf is not that difficult. But when you want to mobilize the calf, there are so many tricks. You have to be freeing the calf from the top side, but you have to preserve because as Tamrabhati sir has told, my dear friend, Dr. Pradeep has also told that we don't take out every calf, barsal tissue, either we go with the arthroscopic technique or the mini open technique because as big because this barsa is going to give you the blood supply this degenerated calf tissue because this healing of the degenerated calf is not very easy technique that's why the crimson duvet came the barsal 
um, tissue preservation came into the market. So now you see, once you have seen this, now you check the reducibility of the cuff. Because you see, now I am checking as Dr. Pradeep has told that this cuff may look like the big u shaped tear, but you have to check with the, your magic grasper, whether from the front side it is coming to your reduction or from the back side it is coming because sometimes your the l shaped tear might fool you completely. You might, might not get the cuff tissue. Now you see that there are a deep delamination of the two layers. So if you repair, repair just the superior layer and leave the inferior layer, then there is a problem. You, your cuff will be very, very thin and it is 100% will go into re tear. So once you see this sort of bird's eye view from the your posterior lateral corner portal, you will be releasing your the cuff from the six o'clock, but you cannot go 1.5 centimeter beyond the six o'clock because otherwise you are going to hit the suprascapular nerve and also you release the infraspinatus from the back side so there are three tricks that you have to remember that, that you have to release the cuff from the down downstairs that means from the articular side you have to release from the coracoid the coracohumeral ligament and also on the top side you release as much as possible. Don't release, don't go beyond up to the where you see the blood vessels. That means you are going close to the musculotendinous junction. Now you see, I have taken some part of the barcel tissue, but I have not completely denuded. I very, very rarely use the saver on the top side because as I told during the discussion, because if I use the saver, it not only takes too much of tissue, but the problem is that it starts bleeding. Then it is a problem. Now you see, I have already denuded the on the on the articular side because it, it, you can see that it has already been started bleeding where I am using where I am planning to put my anchors. If you see from this bird's eye view, you'll be seeing that there are two different layers on the cup side. You see. Now you can use your anti-grade pass or a retrograde pass. Now I, I am using this spectrum because I have seen how it is there. Now you see this, I am using the magic grasper just like a forceps so that I know that where my bite is going to come and how to relate. Now you see, I am taking the deep down and when you take this bite, you can see this is the poor man's technique. This is the proline suture is coming. And now you see, if you see this tissue on the back side, there are two deep layers. So one by one, I will be taking the deep layer and also the superficial layer. So that you gradually take from the front side, as Amrabadi has, sir has told already, that you have to check the reducibility and you have to plan accordingly. The spacing between the two sutures is, is like five millimeter to eight millimeter. Okay. So passing the sutures, handling the sutures is very, very difficult because once it tangles inside the, your, um, your joint or in, in the subacular space, then untangling the sutures is also very problem because if you uh, use the so, uh, three anchors, then it becomes like 12 sutures around. So it's very difficult. So always you have to understand how to separate the sutures, how to pair the sutures. Now you see gradually I am coming from the front side and gradually I will be going to the back side where you can see there is a delamination. And from uh, the great person, the Laura Lafos, we have understood how to take the lasso loops. So we have also taken the lasso loop on the, when I repaired the biceps over there. Now, you see, I have, these, these are color coded. One is the tiger suture and one is the green suture. So alternately, you pass the sutures from the front to back. So when we start doing the, the tying of the sutures, then we go from the back side, the front, because the reducibility will tell you how you go ahead. Now you see, I am again taking a bite and it will again, I will relay the suture from there. So this is the way how you go ahead and gradually take the bites. And remember that when you, when you use your 
your um, the magic grasper the magic grasper is just like your forceps so it will they, you see there i am using the magic grasper just like the forceps so that i can identify where i am going to take my bite so there you can use the spectrum you can use the anti grade suture passer nowadays we are using the the anti grade suture passer which bites the tissue and also it can catch the suture so your one step is uh, not like there because when we started doing it was not there nowadays we are having the this beautiful instrument where we can pass the suture in one go wherever you want so you can use this one you part b you can use the anti grade suture passer so gradually one by one you see how beautifully this sutures are been taken from front to back so this is the front reduction i am checking then the uh, use the spectrum or the bard beak so there are right and left version of the bard beak and the beautifully now you see the the how you can take the bite on the deep structure you see there is delamination on the back side so you have to plan where you basically you are going to come because problem is that you cannot tie the sutures once you take the bite because if, if you tie the suture then this difficulty is that you won't be able to see the under surface so that is the problem so that's why you have to understand how to handle this sort of sutures because you see what pradeep has told i completely agree with pradeep that unless you master in mini open calf repair technique you cannot go ahead with the all arthroscopic technique because all arthroscopic technique is not only difficult because of the suture management or whatever because the problem you don't don't see the you see it properly so fast is the vision then only you will be able to manage the sutures even with the best arthroscopic instrument unless you see the calf properly because there is lot of extra fascination during the rotator cuff surgery it is ex articular it is not like the bank cut you are not working in a closed space so that so that there will be bleeding there will be lot of extra fascination around the shoulder because this is extra articular sort of thing so gradually we have taken all the bites from the front and back then we have taken the bite also to the deep layer and i will advise that when you take the bite from the lateral side of the or the the exactly the lateral side then always take care that your bite with the your scorpion or the instrument the anti grade bite suture you just check that you are not biting on the your biceps otherwise it will the patient will be extremely painful and it will be he will be always cursing whenever he will be moving his shoulder now you see the we are gradually doing knots one by one and reducing the cuff the question the debate is again there whether to use your single row repair or a double row repair remember it the reducibility and the tissue quality will be dictating whether you are going to use the your single row or a double row it is a never ending debate that the whether to use the single row or double row even your single row done properly the thing is that you have to see how the release is done because unless you do a good release if you do a tight calf tissue repair then it is 100% is going to fail then if you have good reducibility you have done the crimson duve then probably you can add on the your lateral row anchor because lateral row anchor will create your better footprint people tell that the healing rate of the double row repair is much better than the single row but if you read the literature if you see the re tear rates probably at 5 year time or 10 year time the re tear rate in both the single row and double row is more or less similar the problem with the double row repair is that if there is a re tear then probably you lose much tissue on the calf side then then your revision surgery becomes difficult and always remember that you don't medialize very very far there is a limit of medialization of your footprint remember it is only 10 mm maximum 10 mm you can medialize on the humeral side and never put any tension on the calf tissue try to release on the articular side try to release on the bursal side take as little as possible the bursal tissue don't take away the posterior bursal tissue if the your visibility is you can see whole calf 
you don't have to take aggressively all the basal tissue on the top side because if you take that probably you lose loss of vascularity so once you have done this then probably you can whatever knot you you can do i have learned only one knot from my uh, mentor so i always whatever i whether i do a bank cut or a cuff i always use this alternate six half stitch i don't use any fancy knots over there but remember when you tie the knot on the cuff tissue never make it too too tight because if you make it too tight sometime it can cut through so single row double row that debate is there whether you can do it all arthroscopic or a mini open technique that debate is still there i am not going to debate with my very dear and close friend and brother pradeep because we have all been he had the uh, he probably argued on the question whether the, we, we have to master or graduate i think it is the, you can use either term whether because we have all started doing the open surgery then only we can learn this arthroscopic technique and if you see that your reducibility is good then probably you can use the lateral row like this pradeep has shown us very very beautifully the cheap way of the easy way of doing this one how to pass the suture from the front and back but if you are if you are very expert you can do it properly and your constraint is not there i think the question probably he has told that it get it takes lot of time i think once you have done in big, big numbers your time and everything it, it is the question every surgery probably when we start started doing the femoral interlocking one locking the distal locks were taking too much time nowadays within 5 10 minutes probably we all do the locks so i think if you can do this technique if 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 you have you don't have the uh, problem of having the anchors you can do it perfectly so i just wanted to share this much the technique i just uh, i never i thought i'll be putting the thing just the technique how i do the my all arthroscopic or the double um, the layer or the laminated deep cuff tears okay so uh, thank you samantha sir uh, so i think i think the video was proper no yeah yeah it was very nice streaming, streaming, streaming was proper whether it is never never yeah. stopped in between no 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 and it was okay, okay. visible very nice because, my, because i was worried with the my net sir connection so i think it's went smooth no no it was nice sir. okay if there is any question i think pradeep will be definitely having some debate because yeah. he is always be he is always be adamant that it has to be done with the mini open and nowadays we all do the uh, the all arthroscopy pradeep know that the i am doing the arthroscopy since long so this is the this is not the question of ego it is the question that i completely agree with pradeep it is the how the whether the patient is satisfied or not and the surgeon has to be very comfortable in his technique if you struggle with the scopy there is no point in doing this scopy it is just you don't it is not there is no questions of surgeon ego it, you have to see the tissue you have to take proper bites and you have to anchor it properly if you can do either way mini way maxi way or the arthroscopy way that doesn't matter it is ultimately whether the calf is going to heal heal yes or no thank you very much for your kind and patient hearing thank you sir so uh, any questions to samantha sir on the panel sir i think uh, yes sir sir uh, we have tried to highlight from the open to the arthroscopic to the usage of biology of how the cuff has to be repaired and the outcome how the cuff has to be addressed and to get a good outcome there are different ways that we can uh, approach it and i am sure the principle of each uh, uh, procedure would be to identify the anatomy first understand it through imaging and compare it with the clinical finding that you have on the patient and then plan your surgery up front then based on whether you want to do it open or arthroscopic is a matter of choice how the surgeon is comfortable with and i am sure each of the techniques have given good results and there is not one that can score over other so there is so it will be a minor thing and i am sure uh, the panel of surgeons that have spoken along with me 
Dr. Pradeep and uh, Samantha sir will agree that there is a learning curve in each technique and each procedure. I am sure at the end of the day, if the patient goes home happy, that is not a better thing that anyone can expect. It is the most important thing is the patient. So I am sure technique comes second. And I am sure all each one of the techniques should give great results. I am sure Samantha and uh, Pradeep will agree with this. No, no, problem, problem. There is one problem. If there is any question in the forum, either it is a pelvic and acidogolab or in the scopy, I, me and Pradeep never agree because he is in the North Pole, I am always in the South Pole. So we never agree on any point, either it is a pelvic meeting or an arthroscopic meeting. So I think we, they are, in, the, in a closed door, probably we will be agree. But in a forum, we are not going to agree on that. <laughs> now here we have to give a clear message to the audience. No, no, clear, sure message, clear, clear message is that I think those who are going to start with the calf repair, I, I always advise, please follow the mini open technique. Because the mini open technique is the base of your learning. Unless you realize how to mobilize the calf, how to take the sutures, how to handle the sutures of 10, 12 sutures, then probably you never master. Because we have all struggled for many, many years to master. The, you are seeing a video of 15 minutes probably, but I have struggled for 15 years to acquire this skill. So this 15 years you have to dedicate then only probably you will be able to mask the replicate this of calf repair all arthroscopic. But start to start with, I think we all have followed what Pradeep has told. Pradeep, your thoughts? So, uh, that's what I said. So there is a learning curve is a little bit higher for arthroscopy. Um, and, I, 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 and I follow the same teaching that goes in... Uh, uh, in KEM, again, I, I, I portrayed in the slide that if some technique is giving good result, if there's a literature to uh, show that it has uh, give good result, know how much soever difficult or if expensive it is, it should be done. But if the two techniques which are giving good result, then um, I think the simple and cost because of someone as lazy as me, I don't like to do uh, eat this way around. I, I, I like to eat this way around. If it's simple and cost effective, I'll go for that. Um, if it is the same, if, if the food is going in your tummy, tummy, then I would like to eat this way. Manta, sir, No, no, there are uh, another one technique. You can <laughs> take the, even, even if you take your food by your rice tube also. There yes, are yes, 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 that's what I'm saying. So that is not the question. Of how <laughs> nobody has taken the food the Pradeep was told in the first way. So fast way, because, because the problem is the how our parents have take, uh, to, to shown us how to take the food. That is the easiest way. We never take our food from behind the behind our head. <laughs> yeah, but our, in the college did somebody, our professor also, also told us that even the food can be delivered in the rail stew way. So it is your choice whether you take the rail stew way, either the straight way or the backside way. So I think we all agree that the, the easiest, safest, whatever suits in our country and whatever suits out to best to the patient, best to the surgeon, it is not never the surgeon's ego. Mm -hmm. I think we sometimes with the surgeon's ego is much, then it is a problem that I have to do it. So somebody is doing all arthroscopic. So next day onwards, I'll be doing all arthroscopic. I have seen people doing five, six hours with all arthroscopic technique. And ultimately at the end of the day, they are just opening it and putting the sutures with all tiring job. So it is not like that. So it has to, you have to master every, every skill to master the all arthroscopic technique. It is not a very easy surgery. It, it cannot be ever compared with the open lap coli and, and the, the, your, the, the all artho, all lap, laparoscopic lap coli. It is never like uh, open cholecystectomy or the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. It is much, much difficult than mini open to the all arthroscopic cup repair. I think the basic uh, advantage of orthoscopy is uh, number one, whenever you are cutting a sheet of collagenous tissue, and if you are uh, gonna avoid that, then I think orthoscopy has much more advantage and that, that, that goes for bank card repair. Because then we don't need to cut the sheet of collagenous tissue of subscan. 
you don't need to split the subscap you know like that however uh, if uh, you see the muscle splitting muscle splitting as i said is not morbid and we we do many surgeries of that that is number 1 point number 1 point number 2 is um, the the results of cup prepare are dependent upon what job you do at the cup level and not how you approach the cup by the skin and muscle so yes um, as competent surgeon as uh, dr samantha or dr amrauti who can do the job uh, through the say in a very small incisions and through the um, uh, scope I, i think that is the way to go uh, if not uh, or if it is even if you are but it's going to cost patient a 50000 rupees extra then means that you 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 should have this under your armamentarium suppose some person who is economically much more challenging then just for the hake of i do orthoscopy all the time you there is no how means that, that in my discussion many of the time it happens to that uh, oh he does mini open that means he is not uh, good at orthoscopy i think that is the uh, notion which i challenge uh, it is a choice that i say uh, uh, as i said in, and i i, I learned it from a person who was um president of ana and who, who changed his practice of 25 years of doing orthoscopic cup prepare and that that is a big thing for me uh, so i i always uh, uh, being in km i i get an opportunity to to um, uh, work with people who are near retirement and near retirement people say you know uh, the words of wisdom you know and and and, and <laughs> uh, i always like to work with people who are near near retirement they they they, they will tell you the truth can i can i add to what pradeep is trying to tell here we have all been in the past you know told why the persistent discord or remote the very fact that we have been taught in the past to remove the persistent we need to have retears if you need to have retears then the companies would be happy to use their whatever patient that heals where the quality of the bone is restored then the companies have very less job to do so that is one aspect that we were probably hoodwinked i can say to you know how the cuff has to be addressed second thing is if you have seen uh, snyder doctor snyder's paper we are all taught to do my The fracture at the level of the GT to you know bring in they added a new layer of tissue and increase the girth as well as the thickness of the cup tissue and the healing was much better. But on the contradictory, what we are uh, taught to you know what we are made to learn or heard from podiums across the globe that this will cause weakness of the uh, bone and probably the fixation of your cup in that area will become weak, which is not true. in fact we will be adding less number of anchors in such a situation and we will have a better cuff repair that means we are not benefiting the trade partners in you know uh, using the implants so these are the different uh, you know permutation and combinations that work in the market as well as how the biology has to be addressed in the tissue that the younger generation should know and the right message across all platforms should go in the coming days through the ias and through any other forums and our younger generation should know that implants will not add value to the repair of the cuff it is the biology that improves the outcome of any cuff repair provided we address all the other paraphernalia that are there with the patient age bone quality diabetes and all those things and i'm sure samantha and pradeep will be in this on the same platform because we are all are from the learning institution and teaching institutions over a couple of years and this is the message that should go across to people who are coming and practicing cuff surgeries thank sir. you so much thank you sir that's a very very clear message we should must go on from this meeting and uh, uh, i think uh, It, it's a time for this webinar to end up uh, i take the privilege to thank our guest speakers professor rajkumar amravati sir dr pradeep nimade dr surindu samanta sir 
for such a nice presentation and a very, very healthy discussion that enlightens to all of us. I thank Dr. Puneet sir uh, for giving this opportunity under the banner of the Uttarakhand Automatic Association to hold this course, this webinar. I thank all my panelists. And with your permission of Dr. Puneet, shall I uh, say a closure to this web, uh, webinar? If you agree, we can yes, all sir. leave this meeting and we can close this meeting. Thank you, yeah. sir. All. For this thank meeting. you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you, sir. Thank you a lot. Thank, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Pradeep, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Good night, sir. Good night, Good night sir. Thanks for coming and joining in, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, sir. Bye. Bye.